can you talk a little bit about the police ethics committee and the structure of it? Some of us may not actually even know what it is. So uh, the police ethics committee is, um, or there's a commissioner, and the commissioner is in Quebec, I'm pretty sure. And anyways, when you uh, when you file a complaint, it goes to the you file it to the commissioner. The commissioner then takes a look at it and decides to further investigate your complaint or not. If they decide to further investigate your complaint, they they have um, an investigator that t first talks with you and asks you questions, um, which you're not allowed to have a lawyer with you at the time. So you have uh, a person that's you know trained in certain ways of interpretation. I mean, wh what I can say is the police ethics commission, the, the investigator comes and asks you to, because you've made a statement in your complaint, asks you to re, or to say again your statement to, to I don't know, mm -hmm. to, to tell them again or tell what happened, which to me is a trap because in what I've found out in legal time, in legal terms, it, you know, whenever you say something, if you say something slightly different, they will jump on that and deem you uh, uncredible and incredible. And then suddenly you're, no matter what you said, they, they said, well, you lied there. And it was really just two ways of saying something. So when, when the police ethics inspector, which is a former force uh, officer, he's like a retired uh, police officer, um, he's supposed to be the impartial uh, statement taker, asked me uh, to, you know, tell me what happened. I told him, well, you've read it, right? And he agreed. And I, oh, what do you want me to tell you? I'm going to read it to you? So I started reading it to him. <laughs> and I said, I mean, really, I'm sure you've read this. Like, if you have any questions about it, I can answer those questions, but I don't want to fall into a trap where you're going to say, oh, he said this, he said that, when I talked with him. What are your questions? And so he, he had, you know, he had already pre-written about 10 or 12 questions. After, you know, talking to him for an hour or so, he finally, he, he only wrote two of the questions. He wrote a few, few lines of statements because it was pretty, my statement that I'd written was pretty in-depth. Mm -hmm. And he... Uh, he decided to say, okay, thank you very much. He has his part uh, from my on my side. And now he's supposed to go and speak with the police officers, or he's supposed to deem, he's supposed to see if there actually is a case here. Um, if he decides that there is a case from what, what I've said um, happened that night, then he would, he'll call for the police officers to have a statement, and then he'll further look into it. He might call back. He might want me to make another statement. But what will happen is that we'll arrange for a date or a time for all the parties to meet, which is myself, uh, a mediator, which is either, I'm not sure, either the inspector or a commissioner or one of his uh, associates, and the police officers in question. But I'm not allowed to have a lawyer again. And uh, from that, through discussion, uh, I'm supposed to receive an apology if I win, right? Or, I mean, what happens if you do? They find that the police, you know, made a wrong against you. What happens to the cops? Um, well, well, I think it's more like a, an extended vacation. That's that's what it's it's. They get, I get. They get on their file. It gets written that yes, they were found guilty, or they were found that they did a boo boo or a bad or. And they get some sort of uh, six-week vacation, which is six weeks that you're not supposed to work, but you're paid. So, I mean, sh I've been working all my life. I ain't never had one of those. <laughs> so I should start doing more bad shit. That's what I was saying. Well, so now, now you're waiting, I guess, to hear back. How long do you think yeah. that's going to take? Do you know? Well, I, we just got a, a, a paper from uh, the lawyer from the, the cop side, and the lawyer says, well, we're not going to proceed with any of this until we hear about the tickets. So until we deal with the tickets, none of this will move forward. 
and uh, the tickets where I just got my first court date for the end of April, which is over a year. It's always your first court date. You show up. The cops don't show up. You're like, yes, I want to I wanna further. I want to take this further. And then the lawyer, the uh, prosecution is always like, well, you know, if you take this further and you lose, we're going to add additional charges to make you really, you know, not want to, you know, continue with something like this. Or you can just pay a, a smaller amount, which is usually, you know, on, on a ticket, there's three fees or there's two fees. There's the, the initial fine, then there's like the added taxes or added fees and then the final amount. So they, they usually say, well, you know, don't pay the second amount. We'll just make you pay the first amount, you know, and that way you can just get out of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you say, no, well, I want to contest it. And they say, okay, so you're here. Oh, but the cops aren't here, so we have to proceed with the cops. Okay, let's set another date, you know, six to eight months later. And then you show up that day. And if they have enough time to deal with you then and the cops are there, you know, you go <laughs> forward. And uh, so it won't be till after that time that any of this will proceed. And uh, if I don't have a lawyer, then maybe the cops will bring in their, their lawyer and... Uh, try to get me on something but if I don't win these tickets it looks like everything will probably be thrown out. Um, on March 15th it's actually international uh, it's an international day for against police brutality and there's demonstrations happening here in Montreal do you think there's lots of other Canadians out there that are having these experiences that you've had and uh, do you think that a day like this is a great chance for them to share their voice and share their stories? Well. Wow. I mean, I know tons of people that have stuff happen to them. Uh, I, I know that they probably won't come out to the, the demo, uh, police brutality demo, because that demo actually receives more police brutality than a lot of people receive in their yeah. lifetime. You know, so I mean, if you've never been brutalized by the police, come to this demo and you'll, you'll definitely see what the police in Montreal have to say when you want to, you know, say something against what the what they do but um i i know that in my neighborhood a lot of the young kids they're they're going through similar roads that i've gone through and um it's sad it's sad because there is no real help for them you know i i try and do stuff but i mean there there should be more and you know kids that they're not stupid like they're smart they know when you're trying to screw them or you're trying to make money off them or you know they can tell when you're lying to them so a lot of these groups that are supposed to help them, if they are there, they're not going to them for some reason. And uh, I, I would say it's probably because they, they're they uh, not sympathetic to the problems that, you know, young people face, racialized people face, uh, immigrants, uh, people that are uh, brutalized by police, people that wear hip-hop clothing, people that have bandanas, people that wear hijabs, people that you know, go to mosques, I don't know, just, you know, all, all around the board. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's great that people like you are sharing their stories, because you have to start somewhere, so it's great. I hope you continue to, to keep talking about all these things. It's really important for people to hear. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Adil, for speaking with us. Thank you. <laughs>